before we get this episode started. Starting off the news this week, Elon Musk has made a presentation revealing the future plans of his tech company Neuralink, which aims to eventually connect the human brain to a computer, which could allow people who are paralysed to access and control computers. Musk says that the system that the firm have built thus far has already been tested on a monkey and that the firm wants to work on improving the lives of patients with severe neurological conditions. However, he's also said that an ultimate goal of this technology was to achieve symbiosis with artificial intelligence. It ties into his fears that he has previously shared of a future society where AI supersedes humanity, with Musk saying that this could allow humanity to go along with the ride. In other news, the first photo of quantum entanglement has been taken. Quantum entanglement is where two particles can interact and share physical states no matter the distance between them, and is extremely important to quantum physics as a whole. The photo was taken by a team from Glasgow University where entangled photons from a quantum source of light were fired at what they call non-conventional objects. To start off the paleontology news this week, a very cool new discovery has been made in more Burmese amber. This time, it's the preserved foot of a new species of enantiornithine bird that displays some very unusual anatomy. The specimen, at 99 million years old, has been named Elictoornis chenguangi, meaning amber bird named in honour of Chen Guang, and it was micro CT scanned to produce a 3D reconstruction, revealing that this animal had a very elongated third toe. In fact, the toe is 20% longer than the whole lower leg bone, the tarsa metatarsus, and no other bird is known to have ever had a foot morphology quite like this. It is suggested by the researchers who described it that perhaps Elector Ornis used its toe to scoop out lava and insects from tree trunks, like an eye eye. Next up, we welcome a brand new species of hadrosaur dinosaur. Named Aquilorhinus palimentus, this animal dates back to the lower Campanian of the late Cretaceous, with the remains of the species being uncovered in southwestern Texas. This is a pretty significant dinosaur, as its unusual anatomy, with lower doors that meet at the front of a W shape, show that the hadrosaur had likely had a unique feeding style, eating semi-aquatic plants, and Aquilorhinus' position as a non-saurolophid, more primitive or basal than other hadrosaurids, sheds some light on how the remarkable crests of these animals evolved. It also indicates that there may have been a greater diversity of basal hadrosaurids than we previously realised. And finally, even more remarkable fossils have been described this week, with the description of a specimen of Microraptor that actually preserves a new species of lizard inside its body cavity. Now named Indrosaurus wangi, this lizard is relatively quite complete and articulated, illustrating that Microraptor would have been an opportunistic predator that quickly swallowed small prey whole, head first. It also demonstrates that this lineage prey was fully digested and not egested as pellets, showing that the evolution of flight did not directly result in the development of pellet egestion. This discovery also allows us a better view of the prehistoric food web and trophic interactions that once existed in this ancient ecosystem. Thank you very much for listening to this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it, and if you did and you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to learn more about this world, its history and the wonderful life that surrounds you. And if you have, we'll see you on Sunday.